Let's be honest, the SEC and the U.S. government wants nothing to do with Bitcoin, crypto, and digital assets. It makes me concerned because a lot of people aren't looking forward. So to me, I'm always taking a look at the alternatives. And what I'm talking about is there is this thing called Operation Choke Point 2.0. It's going on right now. And what the U.S. government is essentially doing is, of course, shutting down those banks. And they've been doing this since, you know, March of this year, shutting down those banks, actually even before that. So it's a little bit of a problem to have an on-ramp if you can't use the bank to buy those cryptos and digital assets. And people say, well, well, Rob, what, what, what about a DEX? Well, you have to get that fiat into crypto first to exchange it for other things. So unfortunately, right now, we are beholden to these banks. And that is the problem. Because of that, we have uh, talked to CEO of Meld, Ken Oling. And when he was on, we had a great discussion about what the future could potentially hold. Now, uh, just as for a, a refresher, MELD itself, it's combining crypto and traditional currency. It's a DeFi lending and borrowing protocol connected by a multi-chain non-custodial wallet to a Web3 neobank. It's multi-chain, which is Avalanche and Cardano. And you can also get a loan and keep your keys because you use your crypto holdings as collateral to secure low interest loans and fiat while maintaining your private keys. So essentially, it's the best of both worlds. And to take a look at that neobank itself, wouldn't this be awesome? You got one account, you can store your cash there, your crypto there, you can buy and sell, you can exchange and swap, you can earn, do all those things that you usually do when you do different things as far as like with stake pools. And of course, you can spend it on your debit card and move forward. So again, everything all in one place. The thing was, is that when I had Ken on, I had one basic question for him. And uh, just take a listen. Okay. And then here's the last question then. Ken, I don't believe you. Yeah. So here's the thing. I've had a lot of people on the show and they tell me great stuff and then they've been lying to me. How can we verify this? So let's be honest. We've had a bunch of different guests on here and they've lied right to my face. They lied to my face. They lied right to you. And to me, I was like, Ken, I don't believe you. So you got to, we got to verify this. We don't want to trust anybody. We need to verify. And Ken in the interview, and I'll link that, uh, there's a link in the description. You can watch the whole entire interview. He said, you know what, why don't we bring on our CTO, which is Pepe Blasco, and he can explain to you how you can verify all these transactions. Because again, this is not some type of centralized exchange or some kind of CFI. This is straight DeFi. This is where everything is staying in your wallet. You have total control of it, and you can verify these things. The problem is a lot of people don't know how to verify these transactions via these wallets. So what we're going to do, I had Pepe on. We're going to take a listen to what he says. But we're going to take a look at the Cardano Explorer. We're going to take a look at the Ether Scan, And we're also going to take a look at Ava Scan to take a look at transactions. Also as well, how to verify those smart contracts. So right now, without further ado, this is the CTO of Meld, Pepe Blasco. You're going to take us through the whole thing. How can we trust you guys? People like to come on my show for some reason and lie to me. So how do we do this? It's very important, don't trust, verify. And I think that's um, what we are going to be trying to do today, showing on-chain data, showing the ideas that we have, and then what are we already implementing to make those ideas happen. Um, so maybe we can get straight to the point. Um, so this is a Melfi website, your money, your way. This is a bank, neobank, digital bank, whatever everyone wants to call it that uh, MELD is creating, and we want to give full transparency on as many things as possible. Um, internally, there are things that we are doing that we always say like, oh, but no one else is doing this. And it's like, right, because they don't want transparency. We want transparency. So just a brief intro, Ken was here. People uh, can go to MELD of five and, and read all about it. But the idea is once you have your account, and once you have everything connected, we will be doing a bunch of things to make sure that the activities that the bank is doing get reflected on chain. And therefore, everyone can go on, check the data. Why are we doing? What are the capacity of doing things that we have? What money is moving? What money is not? And okay. who can move that money? So... Just go to Mel.fi, you can read more about the bank. Um, the example that I'm going to be using uh, for everyone is we recently launched the early access pass to Mel.fi. Uh, it's going to be coming in the next couple of weeks. Uh, in August, we are going to be doing a very slow 
release. This is fiat. We can't afford to do things that break. Um, mm -hmm. In crypto, some people do things that break. In yes. fiat, we won't be as safe as possible, and we want to maintain security and privacy um, for everyone. So on Melt.py, you can get your early access plus pass. You can apply now. It will request some personal information, some email, some phone number. You will most likely get some double checks on it, and we will um, send you an early access code. Um, okay, and then and then Pepe, before we go on, yes. this is, I, I can already I, I can already know there's going to be questions. What countries are, is this available in? So the early access pass is available for almost every country. We are trying to protect ourselves against like sanction lists and countries where regulation is clearly going against what we are doing. Um, but for early access, you can sign up in most of the world. Um, you can click here. There is all the list of countries that we support the phone number for. The actual bank will be released into multiple um, countries step by step. The first release we aim at having one person from at least like 30 different countries. So we want to support as many countries as possible, even on the very, very early stages of our release. Got it. Okay. So not America, but that's to be expected. All right. Yes. So what do we, so we, we sign up. What's, what's the steps and how can we get to verify this stuff? So you sign up, you get a single access code in your email. And for people who already sign up, we send like 32,000 codes earlier this week um, for different wow. people. And if anyone signs up, they will receive their access code as soon as we process it. Um, probably take a couple of days, uh, maybe a week. We also don't want to give false hopes for everyone joining that on August 1st, you will get your thing. Like this is a small uh, rollout. So you get this access code and this access code will give you the capacity to pay $1 and get 100 Gmail and get early access to the bank. So there are a couple of things here. Um, first, Mel has always been a Cardano-based protocol. We are going multi-chain. We are okay. going into our own Mel network. And therefore, the Mel that gets distributed, the 100 Mel, is distributed in the MELD network. However, we are not abandoning Cardano. I want to be very, very clear with everyone in here. We are still supporting Cardano, and that's where we see most of our community right now be. And based on yeah. the data that we've gathered through this week, most of the people have signed up using Cardano uh, to pay for this dollar. So this access code, you can go to the MELD app. In the MELD app, um, if you don't have an account, you can create one. Um, you can connect your NAMI, you can connect your MetaMask, and you have this fancy banner on the right. Um, you will mm. put here your access code, and then it will guide you through the different options that you have to pay fees in. And this is where the funny thing starts. Like, how do we track where those fees are going? And how does Mel track them? And how can anyone in the public verify that we are not just inventing the numbers? We are just not thinking about those things. We are actually building it. So there are a couple of ways, the different networks that you can use. All um, Cardano transactions go okay. to this address. This address is held by the Mel team in a secure environment. Um, and everyone can send transactions here and commit that dollar equivalent um, for a spot in the, in the Mel nearby. So let's get a random transaction. So this one is from 14 minutes ago. Um, we can see who sent this transaction, uh, the UTXOs that were used. And we can use the metadata on this Cardano transaction to understand and for us to gather um, all the information we need for processing this request. So the message is a bank registration, the signature mm -hmm. 
allows us to verify that the user is actually uh, the one creating this request. Mm -hmm. And the reward address, as I mentioned, all rewards get distributed to the MELD blockchain. This is an EVM compatible blockchain. This means that addresses there are basically the same as in Ethereum or Polygon and not the same as Cardano. So since we cannot directly pick the Cardano address and put it into the MELD blockchain, we have to include the reward address. This is automatically done for everyone in the MELDAP, in the background. Right. We will pick the um, same account that you have in the MELDAP and we will automatically allow those tokens to go into your wallet. And then we have this access code. The access code, yeah. as you can see, is very, very differently to what we have in the email. The reason we are doing this is access, we don't know which networks people are going to be paying their fee on. We are allowing for any network that we support, Cardano, Ethereum, Avalanche, and even the MELD network. If we have put the access code here directly, people could monitor the network and front run other users in faster networks. So Cardano usually takes 20 to 30 seconds to confirm a transaction. The MELD blockchain takes two seconds maximum. So hmm. someone were to monitor the, the pending transactions, pick the, code, the access code, and then send a transaction in the MELD network, they could basically like use all access codes, no one will get the benefit and they will be getting this like extra money and all the bank cycles. This is why we have cash it with a couple of elements that are dynamic based on the network and the user. I cannot get into specifics because people could like reverse engineer and sure. um, even though we have prepared everything to be secure, this can still be um, reused if people understood how it's made. Um, but at the end, this is unique. And this is all on chain. And you can find all um, out of this transaction. For other networks, um, we are interacting with a smart contracts. So in this case, we have um, Etherscan. Um, we have deployed our contract here. And we have verified our contract. So. This contract is totally open for everyone to audit, to understand, to take a look, and to see what we are doing. So we can see hmm. that um, there is a set fees method where we can select which tokens and which amount of each token gets accepted as payment. And this is only available for the admin role. Not everyone can go on and say, I want to accept one cent of USDC. Um, so let's pick a transaction equivalent. There are a couple of pending right now. But for instance, this one. Um, this one is coming from my Ethereum address. And since this smart contract is verified, we can decode the actual data on this transaction. In this, in this transaction, we are interacting with the contract and we are having this access code. OK. It's different from the other one. Um, Hashed again based on a specific networks and user conditions, and everything is transparent to the to anyone who takes a look at the at the network. Mm -hmm. What we do with all of these transactions that have been spread to the network is we have a backend system that picks up all events in the four networks that we support right now. Mm -hmm. We pick up this information, we verify that this access code is valid, and that is being sent to someone and has not been used in either the same network or in other networks. And then we proceed with first signing them up for the early access of the bank, which is the important part. And second, sending the 100 mel as reward on the mel network. This is done in the mel network in a smart contract that everyone can also go and check. Um, this smart contract holds all the mail that um, is distributed. We've set up um, this amount of, of mail tokens, but we can top it up, top it up if needed mm -hmm. to afford rewards for more users. Um, and you can see that here we have multiple transactions going on. So this is fully in real time. And what we can do is 
Let's take, for example, the transaction that we saw in Cardano. The reward address is, let's take the last four digits, 5C89. Okay. So we want to go to the reward distribution method. Um, and we now need to find, let me double check, 5C. So if we do 5C89, mm. transaction in here that is being sent a um, hundred mail tokens to this address. So this is totally on-chain. People can go and do the full traceability of all the bank signups, all the users. And when we go here and go back to the uh, rewards contract, we can see that as of now, 3,500 rewards have been sent. These are actual users that have paid $1 to be in this early access. There is no marketing tricks around it. We cannot fake this. This is all on chain. If you want to go and check, you can always go there, see the latest number, and make sure that the KPIs and the metrics that the mail team is sharing are accurate, and you can see it grow. It's blockchain, it's transparent. We are fully open with the community and um, people can go and analyze the smart contracts. We have a book bounty program that they can check on our docs in case anything uh, that they find may be um, having a security issue. Um, and all data is on chain. Perfect. Okay. So that was a lot to, that was a lot to take in, but I think what we'll do here is so everybody watching at home, all the everything that, that Pepe just showed on his screen, there's going to be a link in the description. You'll be able to find all those different scanners to go through it: Cardano, Ethereum, and Avalanche. So that is you know, the first part. You're going to need to get used to that if you want to verify these things, right? Don't trust. We need to verify, and there it is. But Pepe, here's some questions. And sure. when in the very beginning, and I should have stopped you, but I didn't. Sorry. You said, okay, when you guys get this this sign up code. You're going to say, okay, here's a sign-up code. You're going to put a dollar into uh, the bank, which is out of Lithuania, so you guys can do it you know, globally. But when you do that and you put that dollar in, you get 100 meld. Is that correct, what you said? Yeah, so you are not actually putting a dollar into your bank account. You mm -hmm. are paying a $1 as a fee for the early sign-up. So okay. the bank will have um, free and paid subscriptions. Um, what you are getting is to get in the line to be the first people that will be able to use that bank, either on the free or paid service, depending on how the rollout uh, process goes when, when everything is there. Um, so it's not actually a euro or a dollar going to your bank. This mm -hmm. is purely just on chain. It's not yet on any IBAN account in Bitcoin. Gotcha. So, well, I got to tell you right now, I think, uh, I think Mel token is up to like uh, two and a half cents. So, you know, right there, you're doing pretty good. You get a uh, hundred, a hundred Mel, you're actually uh, making money. So for, for that one, I get it. And then to, to move on to the actual contract, the smart contract, did you guys go through an audit already? Or are you guys going through an audit at some point? Because we've always hear about these, well, there was this problem with the smart contract and for some reason there was no audit. So uh, talk to us about that. So our policy is anything that holds money from users is going to get audited. So the mail token that we deployed into Ethereum and into Avalanche was audited by Certic. The report is public and it can even be found directly on Etherscan or on CoinMarketCap. And we can also leave the link to that in the yes. description. Um, the lending and borrowing system that we are developing for Cardano and um, will also be audited when the release time comes, same as for the lending and borrowing in our MELT network. And um, something that we also do, for instance, we have a governance system coming in, hopefully really, really soon for everyone, that will hold MELT tokens. So it's real money, we have audited. Everything that touches real money on chain gets audited and we have a book bounty program where white hats can get rewarded for finding security issues that we can collaborate on resolving. 
Gotcha. Okay. So then the last thing I'll say is like this, all these links are in the description, but at some point you're not going to want to go back to uh, this video to verify things moving forward. So what I'm going to do is like just what, what Pepe had talked about. There's a couple different places that you can go to to kind of just take a look at these scanners. First of all, I like coingecko.com. And you can see here that under the explorers, there's Cardano scan. You can use that. And if you click on this, you can sell yeah, Etherscan, Snowtrace, Explorer, and Aviscan, the same things that Pepe was using. But then Pepe, and then also the, the source code is here for GitHub, uh, the Twitter, API ID. You were talking about, about CoinMarketCap a little bit ago. And mm -hmm. let, let me just take a look at Meld itself. Is there a way to, you talked about um, the smart contract audit. Is mm -hmm. it on here or is there someplace else I, I have to look for that? Yes. If you scroll a little bit down on uh -huh. the left column, you will see audits, oh. Celtic. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, well, I see. I learned something new today. So we actually have a pretty good security score. It's on the top 10 smart contracts and based on Certix's opinionated score. Um, I am very, very happy with the result and the work that people have been doing on the team. Um, okay. A fun detail of our token and our smart contracts is when you go on chain, we have like a cherry on top for very tech savvy people. All mail tokens in every network will have exactly the same address. And not only that, but all mail smart contracts Yes. Start with the mail ID. It's three 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 zero 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 three three three, and then the last two digits are just to identify. So the bank sign up is three 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 zero 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 three 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 ends mm -hmm. in B zero because it's the first contract of the bank. The bank rewards ends in B one. This is the Cardano one, so it doesn't count. We could not have updated. It's yeah. the Avalanche and the Ethereum one. So gotcha. you go to Avalanche, you go to Ethereum, the token is going to be the same. We will be deploying to Polygon, buying to Binance, Smart Chain really, really soon. It's going to be exactly the same address. These are the little things that we do that shows that we care about the tech and what's underneath. Because most users are never going to realize that. Most users are never going to see that. But right. it's the cherry on top that shows that we care about the products that we build. Okay. Well, perfect. So Pepe, I know you've got to run. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, first of all, I want to say thank you, Pepe, for, for showing up because I know you're busy trying to make everything work. We just want to make sure that we're protected and we'll have you back on again and we'll go, we'll go even deeper or we'll just do a refresher. But for everybody watching the video, again, links are in the description and you can find out everything from there. Pepe, once again, thank you for stopping by. Thank you, Rob. It's been a pleasure. Great. So I know that was a little bit long, but I think it was great information, especially moving forward to how we want to do things. Again, if we want to be here for self-custody and rely on ourselves, if we don't want to trust anybody we have to verify, we got to do the work. And that's what it's going to take. So I linked every single thing that Pepe talked about in the description. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is very time sensitive. That's it for today. I appreciate you stopping by and I'll see you on the next one.